everyone. Um, today I'm going to show you all how to do the orange peel quilting that I did on my Vintage Housewife quilt a few weeks ago. I had a lot of people ask for a tutorial. Um, I have a Gamel Statler stitcher, so it's fully computerized. Um, I definitely would not try this pattern if I was still hand guided, but I've always loved it. And I was always really um, intimidated by it because you have to line up each row. It touches the previous row, so that's kind of scary. But I did some research and I'm gonna show you all what I did. Okay, so the first thing I did, I've got my quilt loaded. It's basted down. I'm gonna use a really unforgiving light pink thread on black so that y'all can see. I would recommend definitely doing this in repeat patterns. Um, and that's not something I use for everything. I do use a lot of edge to edge, um, but for this design, I would recommend repeat patterns. So if you're used to using edge to edge and you've never done repeat patterns, I'm gonna go ahead and set it up in edge to edge and show y'all how I get to repeat patterns from there. It's just a little easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so I'm all set up in edge to edge. And to get to repeat patterns from here, I just go to select all on the keyboard, that's control A. Um, your pattern is all gonna highlight in yellow and then right click, come down to relocate. And then if you click shift all to two points, it's gonna give you an error message, basically saying it's gonna convert it to repeat patterns. Um, so just say yes. And then don't click anything, don't push any buttons just hit the escape button and it's going to go away. So now you are in repeat patterns and you can manipulate this a little bit easier. So I'm going to go ahead and quilt the first row. I think I have my peels set to about two and a half inches. You can kind of tell on the grid how big it's going to be, um, but you can always just kind of test it before you start. So like I said, I do have pink thread on black fabric, so you're going to see I am still battling a little bit with needle deflection, and that could either be me um, or an engineering issue. I've heard both ways. I could stand here and fiddle with the needle position until I'm blue in the face, but for the most part, if you match your thread color to... Um, your background fabric, it's going to blend in and you're not going to notice. But for the purposes of this tutorial, don't hate on me too much if you see a lot of um, needle deflection. One other thing I do want to make note of with this pattern is I, I have to stand with it the entire time it's quilting. Um, I don't want it to get off in any way because I don't want to have to unpick my stitches. And it's just worth it to stand here and keep an eye on it and make sure that the needle is landing where you want it to. So just be prepared, um, get a comfy chair and just sit close by and make sure you can see what it's doing. Definitely don't walk away and come back when it's finished a row. Okay, so it's finished the first row. I've gone ahead and rolled the quilt just a little bit um, and then I relocated it just like you normally would when you're doing edge to edge, just making sure that it's gonna line up with the previous row um, or so you think with this pattern. So I chose this point to line it up to. It's just the bottom of the very first row. And if you look on my computer, you can see the blue crosshair that's where my needle is right now. And you think, oh, it looks pretty good. Zoom right in, it looks good. Um, let's see, it might be a little bit, it drifts just a little bit when I let go of the handle. Okay, so now if I come, let's go down to the end of the first row. Let's say I'm gonna see what it looks like over here. I'm just gonna drop my needle down into the fabric so it doesn't move when I walk away. If you come over here to the computer screen, you can see that is not where you want it to be. It should be over here where the tip of my mouse is. It's drifted a good eighth of an inch maybe. Um, some people, I've heard two arguments about this. One is that 
it's a computer error and I don't think that's the case I think I agree with the other argument and that is um, that quilts shrink as you quilt them um, and with a pattern like this that's pretty dense it's going to shrink and it's just it is what it is so I'm going to show you all how to line it up um, and I'll be right back so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete my existing boundary uh, and if you just select that blue line that you made when you set it up in edge to edge it should highlight blue and you can just hit the delete key and it's going to go away so now we're going to actually redraw the boundary and I'm going to click it along the bottom of that first row and I'm going to click basically at each point so I'm going to click here 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 and so on and so forth across the entire bottom of that first row and yes it's going to take me a few minutes but I promise it's worth it you're going to be able to see exactly where everything is going to hit so I'm going to show you all how I do that in just a second okay so to make sure I'm being as accurate as possible I'm going to lower my needle not low enough to where it drags across the fabric you can kind of hear it scratch it so I'm going to raise it a little bit so here I go um, I also would recommend probably unplugging your laser for this because if that gets you confused if you think you're landing where you should because of that red dot I would go ahead and unplug it just so you can see where your needle is exactly so I'm just gonna click 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 I'm gonna do this all the way across the quilt okay so when you get to the to the very last point on the bottom of that first row just continue drawing your boundary like you normally would so I'm gonna bring it all the way down I'm gonna go back to the left side and then I'll bring it back up because my fabric is kind of crooked I'm gonna help it a little bit and then I'm gonna close my boundary so now when you come back over to your computer screen you're gonna see this wacky and wild boundary that I drew and you can see it starts off pretty good on that left side but the farther along it gets the more off it gets so from here you would select that entire next row just make it yellow you don't need to make it any other color um, this is just going to allow us to uh, manipulate the entire row so I'm going to grab this right handle and I'm going to move it just a little bit and try to make it line up with these intersecting I know it's confusing because you're looking at that red line but pay attention to the blue zigzag and it might take a little bit of doing here so just kind of take your time and manipulate it the best you can and then make sure on the left side that everything still looks pretty good okay so like this point here the blue point it looks like it's a little too far to the left so I'm gonna go over to the machine and actually see where the needles gonna hit and make sure I just didn't um, draw the boundary a little off okay so I've stopped my needle um, right at the point at the bottom of that that row there so I'm gonna check it on the on the computer it actually does look pretty dead center of that next row um, it does look like it's a little too far up so I'm gonna move it okay so it took me a few minutes to really get that lined up um, I like what it what it's showing me on the screen I'm gonna go back to the beginning of my row and just make sure before I start that everything is where it should be all right I've got my row lined up um, enough that I think it's gonna look good to the untrained eye 
don't be hard on yourself if you don't hit every intersection perfectly. I would say my accuracy with this uh, technique is probably one to two millimeters. Um, just not at all enough for people to really realize that you're off by that much. So you can see on the computer, the first row compared to, so the first row is red, we've already stitched it. Uh, and then the next row, which is black, you can see how far off it can get. Uh, and it doesn't look like much, okay? So it's only maybe 3 16 of an inch, but it's enough to ruin the whole design. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch this next row and I'm gonna show y'all why I like to stand with the machine uh, while it's stitching. All right, so once it reaches the top of this first row, we're just gonna watch it real closely. So that looks pretty good. So we're gonna wait for it to get back up to the top. Sorry y'all, this is like awkward. <laughs> All right, so that still looks pretty good. So everything's looking the way it should. However, I feel like as you get farther along the row, that's when it really kind of starts to shift a little bit. So I'm just gonna stand here with it and watch it. And just pay attention. So we're coming up on the next intersection here, and that still looks pretty good. Okay, so it's done a few passes, and I'm looking at it now. And we're right here, and that, it looks okay. Um, I'm okay with it. I'm going to keep watching it because I feel like from this point on it might start to drift a little bit. So we're going to see what it does. Mm, that's still good to me. It does look like it's starting to get off by just a hair. Not something the untrained eye is going to be able to tell, but I'll show you how to kind of force the machine manually to, to hit closer to that intersection so it's not off by quite as much. So I'll let it come up, up to the top here. And I'm gonna put my hand to the right side and I'm gonna apply pressure. And you'll see when I apply pressure that it's gonna help it line up better. So you can see that right bottom right feel there it looks a lot better than the one on the left. So that's why I like to stand here with this, especially as it gets to the right side. I feel like it took me a long time to get everything to line up on this side. There we go. So that looks good. Just remember, don't stress out about getting it dead on every single time. As a whole, the pattern looks awesome. Uh, no one is going to zero in on how off you were by a hair. So just have fun with it and don't be scared. It took me a while to get real comfortable with it. And I would say the quilt on the wall took six rows to do. And when you spend 15 to 20 minutes between each row, lining it up like I did with the boundaries and redrawing the boundaries, you do get really good at it and you'll get the hang of it. I do also want to say that with the size I set on this pattern, I could have fit two rows without rolling the quilt. Now I could have just hit continue when it finished the bottom of that first row it still would have been off. So don't think that you can just get away with doing two rows just because it'll fit. I think it's still going to get skewed. Okay, so I wasn't paying attention because I was talking, but you can see, you can see right here that I didn't put my hand down and apply that pressure. So it is a little off. So that's why you want to pay attention. Um, 
and make sure that you're watching what the needle's doing. And this might make you think twice about charging regular price when customers want this design just because it does take a fair amount of, of manipulating and babysitting. I think it's totally worth it though. But if you're a customer and you've had this done to one of your quilts, this might help you understand. Um, it's not just a matter of loading a quilt and pushing a button for a pattern like this. There can be a fair amount of labor involved. And that's it. So we quilted two rows. And let's see if I can find where I messed up that I wasn't paying attention. I think it was here. I think it was right here. So if I had been paying attention, I would have put my hand down and kind of helped the machine get closer to the left there when it came up to this point. But like I said to the untrained eye, no one will ever notice that you were off by that little. So I hope that this helps you if you're a long arm quilter. Um, if there's anything I need to clarify or if you have any questions, just leave a comment below or um, I'll put my email in the description box. So thanks so much for watching.